Open. That's enough. Thank you for your completely genuine enthusiasm, which it seems to be. I can't seem to shut you up. Oh. I don't know when I became cynical. Maybe it's when I found out you give the audience free chocolate. <laughs> Please find him funny. He's all we have. All we have is this immigrant and some chocolate. CBS cares, but not enough to buy expensive things. <laughs> Let me tell you something, sailor. Craig, you've turned into a dockside whore. Turned into? <laughs> it's a great day for America. Yeah, that's right, do that, yeah. No, let me, uh, yeah, just uh, before I go any further, of course, uh, this weekend it's the daylight savings time on Sunday, so we set the clocks ahead, uh, we lose an hour of our lives. It's like nature's version of Facebook. <laughs> I don't want to lose an hour this Sunday. I think, why can't they put the daylight savings time on during the Oscar ceremonies? That's what I think. <laughs> yes, I'm still mad about it. <laughs> There's a new study that's come out. It reveals this is true, right? Well, the study's true. I don't know how if it's accurate, but the study is a true study that says that the distance between a man's scrotum and his anus. Do you care? Well, I will. I will. I will. The distance between a man's scrotum and his anus. <laughs> I probably shouldn't act it out. <laughs> The distance between a man's scrotum and his anus. Well, the di that distance can predict uh, the man's sperm count. The study also revealed the worst research job in the world. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's really legitimate research or if it's just a scientist that caught by his wife. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm uh, measuring the distance between the... Uh... <laughs> For science! <laughs> Now, there's a couple of big movies opening today, of course, uh, the, uh, there's a, the alien invasion movie Battle Los Angeles and the fairy tale Red Riding Hood. It's very tough for me to choose between these two movies because the straight male part of me wants to see Battle LA, but the other 95% wants to see... <laughs> the other name... <laughs> The other part of me wants to see Red Riding Hood because, you know, red cloaks are the new little black dress. <laughs> Battle Los Angeles is not that realistic, though, because in the movie, America goes all out to defend the city of L.A. But I think if aliens really did attack L.A., the rest of America would be like, well, oh, take it. <laughs> Even people in L.A. would be like, fine, take it. It's crap. We know it's crap. Look at it. It's a dump. <laughs> Even a drawing of it isn't any better. <laughs> I'm not surprised there's a movie about Little Red Riding Hood, though, because the Hollywood studios love a story like that, you know, centuries old, so it has you know, a lot of rich history about it, but more importantly, it's in public domain, so they don't have to pay for it. <laughs> it's the same reason CBS wanted the theme song for this show to be Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> Greggy had a little show, late, late show, late, late show. Greggy had a late, late show, and it was really cheap. <laughs> anyway, the movie uh, Red Riding Hood is from the director of the Twilight movie. No. I just saw the Twilight movie. I saw, a, 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 not a screening, what do they call it? On television. I saw it on television. <laughs> well, I figured I probably should watch this because I've been making fun of it on the show and I thought, ah, come on, watch it. And, see, and I was surprised because I was right. It is garbage. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't, 
don't mean to rain on anybody's parade, but I've, I've seen some bad movies. I've been in some bad movies. I've been in some bad vampire movies, but this thing is a whole new dimension of suck. I mean, all this build-up and tension, and then n nothing happens. It's like porn without the actual porny parts. It's like if the porn and the plumber actually came, fixed the sink, and got paid in money. It's like, it's like if the pizza actually got delivered. Anyway, I, I'm curious about this Red Riding Hood movie. I'd like to see how they're going to stretch this into an hour and a half a movie. Here's the story. The story's like the big bad wolf uh, comes out and he blows the grandmother's house down or something, and then... <laughs> I can't remember. Is that... There's something with the pigs then. No, I don't know. The fairy tales all blend together for me. All I remember from the kid's story is uh, the Snow White and the Snow... the Snow Dwarfs. The Snow Dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Snow Dwarfs. They were like... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those were the fastest little people in the forest. <laughs> the snow dwarfs. No, the seven dwarfs, of course. They were uh, sleepy, grumpy, uh, Norman, Doc, Regis, uh, and Horny. Horny wasn't in Snow White. He was, uh, he's just my own personal friend. <laughs> He's actually over there. Come on out, Horny. Say hi. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hey. Oh, yeah, I was talking about Red Riding Hood, the movie. I'm surprised that Peter aren't pr protesting against it for portraying wolves in a bad light. Well, and, and fairy tales, wolves are always jerks. They always, uh, you know, eat your grandma, blow down your house that your pigs made for you or so. <laughs> Pigs are so clever. Oh, building a house with no thumbs. Let you see you do that, old bastard. <laughs> now, bear, bears in a fairy tale, they're far more reasonable. All they do is object to people breaking into their house. <laughs> What's the deal with people breaking into my house? Is this a, is this a bear I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, it's a sort of Seinfeld bear. Right, right. Hello, Newman. <laughs> oh, uh, it's commercial break time, Jeff. Let's relax with commercials and read. <laughs> CBS Cares. Where were I back? <laughs>